The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond and Platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. on Emacs. Now, if you don't use Emacs, you're not a programmer, and you're not a real, real Linux user or even Unix user from what I understand. Anyway, I will shall leave you, Adam. Indeed. Well, yeah, real programmers use Emacs, Fim, Ed, Cat, a Needle, or Butterflies. But then again, it's Emacs, so you can use Butterflies and Emacs, which apparently some people find funny. So, I'm Andrew Prasaltis. This is Emacs and You, Introduction to the Emacs Text Editor. And before I get into any of the fun little detail, oh, never mind. Let's talk about what I want to talk about first. Uh, so, I'm going to go uh, talk about exactly what Emacs is. I am assuming overall minimal knowledge of the editor. And uh, this is how to get, how do you get it? Why or why not should you use it? Um, some of the terminology, since it's since Emacs is special and has its own terminology for things. Go over some commands, some of how to configure it, and some cool stuff that I think is I personally find useful. Or in the case of uh, the uh, last topic, they're uh, not particularly useful. So. This is um, one of the uh, quotes commonly seen in the Emacs IRC channel. Um, we are, I'm not gonna lie, Emacs sucks. Some of us tolerate it, but we can't tell if you'll be able to try it and make up your own mind. Um, there are, Emacs is, an, is extremely powerful, but at the same time, there are some little niggling frustrations that can gnaw you until you get tired of it and use something else that may be considered a little uh, more sane, but your mileage may vary. So, what is Emacs? Emacs is, uh, came from the uh, some editor macos for the good old Taiko editor. Um, and quote the IRC channel. It's a very it's an extensible, customizable, self-documenting, real-time display editor. And this is all. The, all of those are very true and very emphasized. A desktop and car, including IRC clients, web browsers, music players, and image viewers. Yeah, some, yeah, and don't forget the standard email client that everyone loves to, uh, ooh, I never have to leave Emacs, I can check my mail. Okay, so how do you get it? Well, you ask your package manager to install Emacs. Whatever it's called, it, however you tell your package manager to install Emacs, it's that, that. If the package name is not Emacs, then there's something terribly wrong. And make sure you don't install X Emacs. X Emacs does not count, and a lot of the stuff will uh, not work. A lot of stuff I have may not work as well, or may have different names. So, why or why not Emacs? So let's start with why. Um, Emacs is very featureful. In fact, it's notoriously featureful to the point of where uh, you can eat, where people have claimed it to be uh, massively bloated, extremely extensible. This goes along with the unified configuration language. Um, Emacs itself is a uh, Lisp interpreter with an editor on, with an editor in front of it. So you can easily just go chuck a bunch of Lisp into it, and it will magically go and do. You can bring it to do pretty much anything. There's like a there's even all things a Dbus interface now. Integration with many external tools. Um, in this case, you can just have Emacs run your, say, your Python shell or your Octave shell or, or, other, or other interactive tools. So you don't have to go absolutely switch between windows to go find, the, find or rather use your, uh, your shells. So why not Emacs or why to ignore the E-series of Slackware? Since um, 
so kind, since this man over here so kindly told me that the reason the, why the E series and Slack only contains Emacs is so people can just promptly ignore it. There you go. Um, all of the things people say, all the pro, all the few things people say about Emacs are true. It is bloated. There is so much extra stuff in Emacs that you will never use, never see, never be able to find out about because there's so much of it. But these days, you have so much hard drive. You, there's enough hard hard drive space is cheap, and it and my uh, graphics drivers actually take up more space in Emacs, which is uh, awesome. Um, slow startup. Uh, if you have a very large uh, configuration, which I do, you can. Uh, the Emacs could take a good few seconds to start up, which is not necessarily suited to the workflow of constantly open and make small edits, a bunch of small edits to text files. Um, it's best to just leave it open and then open and then open up a bunch of files while you're in the same process. Although there is a way around that, I'll talk about it later. And the default configuration is not, well, I wouldn't say sane, even though I did. It's not really that nice for people. There's some things that people would want, really like to see, like line numbers that are not enabled in the default Emacs setup. So, terminology. So, here's where I'll, here's where I get to explain all the, all the Emacs words. So, the whole, instead of being actually called a window, the entire Emacs entity is called a frame. Individual splits inside of it are in turn called windows, thus window frame. Um, each window contains a mode line that contains various information about what the buffer contains and uh, about what the buffer contains and various other uh, information about the buffer. You can have the, the different, the same, win same window, buffer can be displayed in different windows, as you can see here, and this little, th this, the yellow region is the, uh, is called the, it's called the region between the mark, which is a considered a previous, which is a previous cursor location, and the point, which is the actual cursor. And the mini buffer is this handy little thing on the bottom that, uh, that what, which you enter in commands. And yes, that does say Tetris. Um, the keyboard. Um, when I talk about Emacs commands, eventually I'll start talking about a bunch of uh, keyboard stuff. So uh, when I say C, I mean control. When I say M, I mean meta or alt. So if I were to go want to do MX butterfly, I would do MX, type in butterfly, and then press enter. And then it prompts me if I want to unleash the powers of the butterfly, I say yes. And it flipped a bit. I don't know if it actually does that or not. So, last bit of terminology. Um, with each buffer, is a, each, with each buffer, you have associated modes. Well, you can only have one major mode per buffer. In this case, major modes usually contain features like syntax highlighting, smart indentation, and they're, basically, they're, li they're generally limited in scope to programming languages like C, Python. XML, C++, HTML, all that stuff. Uh, minor modes provide uh, general, general functionality you might want to have spread across different uh, buffer that are, that, are buff that are major mode independent, like Viper, which is VI emulation, I'll talk about that later. Fly spell, which is on, which is, um, on the fly spell checking, just opens up an I spell process and runs a bunch and constantly checks for your spelling and hide show minor, minor mode, which is code folding. And actually, the only thing about hide show minor mode is that the default key binding involves pressing, involves pressing three different keys, like CC, control C, the at, key, at symbol, shift two, and the actual command. And yeah, yeah, that was, that's, my, that's my thought precisely on this. It's, uh, it does, as is, was one thing that uh, other editors get a lot better than Emacs does. Uh, and faces are uh, fonts and their associated attributes like color, weight, italics, et cetera. So now we get into the little fun of where I talk about how to use this thing. 
So unlike VI, Emacs is modal, you can do whatever, whenever, although in some cases a lot of commands will just go and uh, start bothering you if you try to say open a, if you try to do something like a file operation when you uh, open up the, uh, go to the, uh, if you try to do something in the mini buffer, it will say you're trying to use the mini buffer while using the mini buffer, which can get annoying when you don't know what you've pressed. All right, so if there's one thing that you probably should remember, it is how to get out of Emacs, so here it is. You press Control X and Control C, Emacs, Emacs will ask you to save your, save your buffers and it will uh, promptly die. If you never want to see it again, you can remove it from your system. Um, so you can, you can call command, and you can actually call an arbitrary list command, list, lisp command from wherever. Um, all keys in Emacs are bound to some sort of a Lisp function or C function that is bound to Lisp. And in fact, even typing on the keyboard is bound to a command. It's called self insert command and takes an argument, which is the letter you're trying to insert into the buffer. Um, all functions that are declared interactive in the function itself can be called with MX command name, like butterfly was that in that was the one I was using earlier. That's declared interactive and does all that little uh, fun magic with the. Uh, with the buffer, with the windows. Control X, Control C itself is bound to save buffers, quit Emacs, and in, if you somehow remember save buffers, quit Emacs, but not Control X, Control C, you can type in MX save buffers, quit Emacs, and press enter, and then you will uh, save and quit Emacs. And MX, some function, is just some way to, you can just call arbitrary functions by doing MX, some function. And, any, and if you're ever in the mini buffer and want to escape for whatever reason, if you tr are trying, if you accidentally press Control X, Control C, and you don't actually want to quit, and you forget the whatever one default button there is to abort the quit operation, you can press Control G. I, I probably gonna use that a lot here. So how to move? You can use the arrow keys. I use the arrow keys. There are bindings other than the arrow keys. And yeah. Not really. So actually move, there is everything, it says Emacs is non-modal, everything is bound to control or all meta or whatever. So itself, you can move forward, backward, up and down by using CF, CB, CP, and CN respectively. Uh, these bindings I pers are not particularly well ergonomic in my opinion. Uh, VI gets it right with using HKJL repeat for for these simple motions, but saw a lot of people have gotten used to them over time and they've uh, grown to like them and they're, they're just stuff, they're just there as the defaults. And they're kind of easy to remember, but because uh, they match, but how would you forget that control, that you can move backwards with control B, because, it's, because B, backwards starts with B. So now again to more uh, larger movement increments. Um, Control A moves to the beginning of the line, Control E moves to the end of the line, you can move forward and backward with MF and, F and B, you can go to the end of the buffer with the right angle, M meta right angle bracket, and beginning with the left angle bracket. And then you can jump to any arbitrary line with meta G, G. So here is my handy little uh, buffer here. This is actually my, what the presentation, I ha actually my presentation. So I can just go end of line. Okay, yeah, I'm using a command logger here that does not necessarily like to record some functions because they happen so often, because every single time you type, it would say self insert command letter. And forward, backward word, forward word, and then, I personally found that these uh, these actually go between the word characters, so you so you'll have just this humongous blob of punk like you'll be coding. You'll have this large blob of quotes and parentheses. Emacs will the, this command will go straight from the previous word character to that pre word character to the previous word character, which when you're trying to go over and just delete the thing up to the next the next um, symbol, which is what every other editor does. But, well, every other um, non-VI editor does. I, I found that just to be um, quite aggravating. And you can go 
to the end and to the beginning easily. And go to an arbitrary line. Uh, let's go 200. And the reason why there's two bindings for this is that eventual, uh, eventually people have pressed M, forgot to lift the beta key in time to make M, just do MGG, so they may have bound it to both to uh, keep people sane, I guess. All right, back we go. So you can repeat, action, repeat any action by using control U or meta U. So if I go back to my Emacs window, I can go down, let's say I want to go down 40 lines. I would do control U, 40, control P. And it would go, and it would go down 40 lines. Let's enable line numbers. So if I want to go up 40 lines, I would do, or I could do Alt, 40, control N. Actually, I was doing it back. I just thought backwards. That's nice. And you can see all of the uh, extra stuff going on in the command log down there. So I had a full finger in it. So CU by itself will, if without a number, will, will default to multiplying whatever previous statement you have by four. So if you do um, CU, CU control P, you'll move right four. Uh, you move up four lines. If you move, if you do it, CU, CU, CP, you'll go up 16 lines. And then you can just insert any arbitrary number and you can move massive distances in short amounts of time without actually having to go mash the button tons of times, which is a nice feature. So fo simple file manipulation, control X, control F opens a file, control X, control S saves the, saves the current buffer to a file, and control X, control W does the whole save as deal. If you already have a file open, Emacs will just switch to the buffer when you use control X, control F. Okay, window and buffer manipulation. Um, Emacs can let you go split up buffers and windows and do all sorts of little fun things. So, let's see here. So this is itself is a uh, split here, split into two windows. This is a bit of a, this is not really a persistent buffer. But if I go up here, I can do control X two, get a horizontal split. It defaults to the previous, the previous whatever the current buffer is. I can do control X three to split it again vertically. And these, are, these splits can be done arb an arbitrary number of times. To uh, close a split, you would do control X O. And the splits are completely different. You can do, you can be in completely different places and completely different places in different, different windows with the same uh, buffer in them. Uh, what's next? So if I wanted to uh, make the, us cur the uh, current split the only one in the window, um, it'll, so I can go do control X one, all the other ones will go away. Let me get my command line, let me get my command log back. So if you have a multi, if you have many, so if you wanna just change buffers, like this is the one I'll be going to later. You can just do control X B with a buffer name. Everything is tab completed, so you don't actually have to remember the name. It defaults to the previous one you were at. And to get a list of the buffers, you can do control X, control B. You can see all the other buffers I have open and may show, and I'll probably show you later. If you don't close, if you actually don't actually explicitly kill the buffer with uh, CX, control X, K, it will uh, stay around forever in the running in the background. It will just not be visible on the screen. So control X, K def will um, say, Kill will kill the kill kill a buffer. It will default to the first one you have open. You have to press enter. I have personally found that to be quite annoying. So in my config, I have remapped my remapped uh, control X K to kill only kill the current buffer. 
as it's just, I just I do it enough to make it to warrant having to deal with that. So let's go back. The uh, next thing you got is the help system. It's not really it's not called Emacs is not called the self documenting editor for nothing. So let's go back here. So I let's say I want to go look up the documentation for the function butterfly. So I will do control H F, which is a scribe function, type in butterfly. And it will say that it will use a butterfly to put a desired bit in the device platter. Open hands and let the delicate wings flap once. Server tools hours changing the flow of the eddy currents in the upper atmosphere has caused momentary pockets of higher pressure air to form blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and they they pretty much had some they had some fun. Emacs devs took some fun with that and use it again. So if you ever accidentally press a key binding and you want to go figure out what that key does, you can do, you can do that with control H K. And then you can just do an arbitrary uh, keyboard command. One of the uh, ones that I accidentally like to do sometimes is control X control Q because I think Q stands for quit, right? No, it's not. It changes the read-only bit of the of the, on the of the permissions on the file. That um, threw me for a loop multiple times when it wouldn't let me save my files after I did that. That was a blast and a half. So, and next, if you ever start actually getting into configuring Emacs, you eventually need to find so what setting does what, and you'll have to go do Control H V, which is describe variable, and you can do. Many things here. I cannot think of a variable off the top of my. Um, what is it? Okay, well, there's that one. Um, so it should. So this is just a bunch. So apparently, LaTeX paragraph commands is a variable in the file LaTeX EL. It says where it is. Same deal with functions. And. This is, and you can just, and it gives document everything, all the documentation just goes here and you can even customize the variable. But I will uh, get to that blasts. So there's also search, CS is forward incremental search, CR is backward incremental search. You can go do these, arb you can just, it'll, it'll, it's pretty much search as you type. And there's not much to say there, it's functional. Um, the mark, so I mentioned earlier that the mark was where your previous cursor position was. So you can set it with control, you can set, you can set it with control space. It even says set the mark. And then you can move the point around and thus there's the region. If, and this is not real, and usually it's used for, to select things, but in some cases it can be used more than that. When you uh, jump around a file, you can say I want to go to the end of the file with, uh, so I'm on line 307, right? If I just jump to some arbitrary position and just do some stuff at the end of the file, I'm not certain to remember it's line 307, right? So I won't be able to use M meta G G to go do that. So I'm gonna go to the end of the file. It is. And if I want to go back, I would just do control X X, which swaps where the point is and the mark is. The entire effect of this is that it's, it's very difficult to lose the, your actual place in the file. And, uh, and often, this and since it's often used for selection, the default, tr the default transient mark mode will display, the re will display the region. It can be turned off if you don't like it. Plenty of people don't. What is it? Okay. We're back. So cut and paste, Emacs has its own little kill ring, so you, so it has the completely, we so it has completely unconventional, um, Cutting, cutting and pasting commands. So I can just go over here. It's all, all, all these operations are done in the region, at least the ones I have. There are ones that operate on paragraphs and lines. 
But if I want to go get rid of this line, I would do control W. And it would store it to the kill ring. And if I would do, if I were to say, then cut out this line with the same deal, normally I would lose the first line, right? But control Y pastes the last thing in the buffer. Pa only pastes the thing at the top of the kill ring. However, you know, however, it's a, it's a ring. It remembers what it is. So if you do MY, it'll swap it with the last thing on the top of the kill ring. And I'll just go replace that. <laughs> okay, well, I lost something. That's cool. Well, I'll be able to go, well, I'm pretty, there was, there's definitely a way around that I, did, I pro, there was a uh, higher chance I messed it up, which actually leads to the next thing I was gonna talk about, which is the undo system. Emacs has three different undo keys. I do not know why this is the case. I don't know, maybe some people got tired of pressing underscore or doing, or pressing two different keys to undo and having to do it repeatedly. Um, the thing about Emacs' undo system is unique is that it does not have a redo. All changes to the buffer are, uh, recor are uh, recorded onto the, end, onto the end of the, which is probably some sort of uh, list structure. So I'll just go back here and, so I can just, un I can undo some stuff. So let's undo some things. But, okay, so uh, let's say I actually, I feel like wanting to change something. So, lose something. But normally you would just go and lose your, lose all of your previous redos, right? Here you can eventually, I can eventually press redo enough to go and bring me back to where I originally was in the, in this, which is here. You can, it is very, difficult to lose your, the changes that you made even if you messed it up accidentally. And this, I uh, personally, I find that I don't use this enough. It, it is extremely powerful. All right. So now we get to go into my little short segment on configuring Emacs. Um, I'm gonna go uh, give you a very, 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 very brief introduction to Emacs Lisp, talk about the internal customized interface, um, some of the base, some configuration files and how to use external libraries in your Emacs file. So this is, n this is most of my Emacs config right here. You either call a function with some arguments and parentheses, sometimes arguments themselves can be functions. Um, to set a variable, it's set Q variable to a value, which is also very common. And to often include a library, all you need to do is put require and then the library name. Sometimes the library name isn't exactly what you think it is. You'd have to look it up in the documentation. Often this will load all the necessary features for the library. So, there's, so if you don't feel like writing Lisp, and I don't blame you, um, you can go and do the, uh, use the handy little customize feature. So let's go back to my other buffer here. So. I can go, say I want to go, this is um, all, um, so let's say I wanted to go modify, look at all the configuration options related to the C programming modes. So I would do MX customize group, Emacs is itself the root, so, and it's just the group for C is C. And here you go, all the base, all the variables related to uh, the C, pro, uh, the C programming language, and there are a lot of them. This also affects the uh, C++ and Java and Objective-C modes because they're all kind of like C. So also, you, if you happen to know the variable you want to customize, you don't have to search through all this, you can just do customize variable symmetric. So there's also some sorts of variables, so I can just go pick this one and it gives, the doc gives it, and then you can go change this value to something else. Save the buffer using control X, control S, it will save the configuration changes to, so to, a, uh, to your config file or files if you change the location. And it will remain, and it will remain 
permanently until you actually, until you change it yourself. In addition, you can go uh, change fonts. So if I don't like this green here, I can do MX customize face and it will give me a whatever face is by default, it'll, prompt, it'll suggest the face that the, current, the curse point is currently at. So I can go do this and it gives me all sorts of neat little information about what I can change. It comes with a set of colors. They can be specified themselves through hex, hexadecimal values. And I have used this on occasion when I've been trying to make, email, make themes to figure out what exactly the colors are and how they are set by default. All right, back we go. So configuration files, you got your standard .emacs if you only have one, one thing to worry about. Um, sometimes these things, people like to put lots of stuff in these. It's, you can get really big really fast. So personally, I like to go put everything in .emacs.d and the default config file is init.el and you can just store all sorts of files in there and have it, kept, have it all kept in a nice lock away and if you're crazy like me, you can put them under version control because you can make changes so often and it'll occasionally break Emacs. So adding new libraries, you can just, there, there's lots of just random list files lying around on the internet. You can get them with uh, Emacs. You can get them from various places. I put them in the in .emacs.d site lisp directory. Um, to actually load the file, actually get make sure your files are visible to the system, you have to add to the load path. So you have to call, uh, the, this, fun this function here. And as I mentioned before, um, the library, you just do this require and it will uh, usually load all the important library features. And sometimes there is stuff can get a lot more complicated. It could be more complicated than this. Sometimes you have to set up some variables to make the thing act maybe more sane or not as zealous. So the Emacs wiki contains a lot of information on this. And it's usually the first thing that comes up when you search about Emacs. So now I get to talk about cool text editing stuff. And the first thing for all you VI users out there is Viper mode, or Viper is a package for Emacs Rebels, or there's various other uh, acronyms for that. So if I, so I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna do MX Viper mode. And it will prompt me with a bunch of extra messages, a bunch of messages and uh, you can tell us to go away by pressing Y. A second, or press something. So what ends up, really? Okay, this didn't, this didn't happen before. So um, there are various levels of functionality that, vi that Viper mode can take away from you to ensure a, perhaps a more pure VI experience or more BI as opposed to if you don't, if you just want to get used to using Emacs commands so you don't accidentally go do something crazy in insert mode without actually in meaning to do it. So there's various other ones. I am, I am a wizard because I'm awesome like that. So I'll press five. And it'll prompt you if you want to make a change permanent. Um, this just, what this does is it makes a file called .viper and stores a list command in it that uh, Emacs sources. Uh, why not? So now I can go into insert mode. I can go type things. I can go do H, J, K, L to move around. I can delete a line with DD. I can undo with U. I can undo with. Yeah, and the, by default, it uses the same standard Emacs over keep this humongous undo list thing and. There's, there's a Emacs package to get, make it actually do redo instead of undo. But in, in a lot of cases, it's, it's unnecessary. And one thing that people often met, often really like from Vim, which is where most, which is what most VI users use, is visual mode. Um, old VI doesn't have that. V does um, file opening stuff. So to mitigate that, there is a library called Vimpulse. It's not an Emacs, you have to pull it down from the Emacs wiki. So it, it's pretty much just Viper mode with more stuff added up on top of it. So I'll go back here and I don't load it by default. 
So now I can go do visual mode. I can do visual line. I can do visual block. I, if I had code folding enabled, I can do code folding with ZC, close with ZC, open with ZO. Um, this, I found this to be a much more um, streamlined experience. Um, VI improved has added some features that make VI a lot simpler to use in this developer's humble opinion. So next thing you got, if you don't like the Emacs key bindings, you can enable the common user act, CUA mode or common user access mode. Um, this makes, this rebinds control Z to undo, control X to cut, control C to copy, and control V to paste. Um, I used this initially because I did not really um, grok the, uh, of the um, Emacs kill ring commands. So it's, if you don't, if you don't want to actually, if you just want to have Emacs, have the customizability of Emacs without actually having to do all the special keyboard commands and just want to say have it act like Microsoft Word or Visual Studio, you can enable CUA mode in your config file. Or actually just CUA mode one, all in parentheses. So, Octech. Wow, spacing sucks, LaTeX. Um, so, if, so it is, this is a uh, superior uh, LaTeX editing mode. Um, the most notable feature is that it, you can preview actual, preview your math functions inside your, uh, like inside, ins actually inside without oh, re-rendering the PDF or DVI. So, so this little file here is the um, quadratic, I still spew out the quadratic formula. I record the command here, that's cool. So what this does here is this is preview, preview LaTeX at point, or rather preview at point. So if I do do it, it'll ask me some questions, and it will display the result of, the, of what would actually be visible in the, in the actual rendered file. I can go over it, change it, I'd have to re-render it, but I, I found that this is, this is, I don't use this enough. I just, these days I just go open, I just go render the whole entire PDF again. If this, if I was, the, the rendering these slides, all these slides takes a good, takes a good few seconds. If I actually had a lot more math, this would make it a lot, this would make the whole process a lot faster. Um, this is actually a LaTeX mode as opposed to a, uh, Stand as opposed to the tech mode that comes with Emacs, it generally gets it generally gets the syntax highlighting right, but there's some extra features that Octech provides that are make editing LaTeX more less painless. So Cadet, um, this so eventually some people decided to say, oh yeah, let's go add some bunch of IDE features to Emacs, and thus was born Cadet. Um, it is in Emacs, kind of, but all of the instructions for it are for a version that the maintainers are using themselves, and it's not, and it's not the one in Emacs. The functionings are completely different. You have to download this 15 megabyte blob of, no, maybe it's like two or three more megabyte compressed blob of zip, extract it, compile it, install it, and add to all of your load paths and to actually use this. Um, I did not set this up. It's uh, quite complicated. There are some more lightweight features I wanna go talk about later, but this gives you full semantic parsing within, with this whole intelligent IntelliSense thing that Visual Studio has. Is, uh, you can make projects, you can generate elaborate code templates, you can create and create and view UML diagrams. It looks, it looks pretty powerful, but I have simply never, um, gotten around to using it, or rather felt like using it. So, autocomplete mode. Um, so this is, a, this is a much simpler version of the IntelliSense that's in a Cadet. It just, it, you, you can tell it to go look at tags, you can tell it to go to look at text in the file, you can tell it to look at other file, other file paths. So let's go to my other file here. So this is a C file, it has two functions. Uh, two functions with really long names. So I want to make a function that's just called do stuff. So that does, that calls these two functions. So, so 
So these functions are really long. Normally I would just have to write the whole thing out, but now I can, if I enable it first, it says, do I want to do awesome stuff with an int or do I want to do awesome stuff with the float? So I can select that. And I can do, it, so it makes suggestions, you can go there, comp and this makes, this makes doing with all those long functionings, like the ones found in glib, a bit easier to deal with. You'd have to tag them first, but that's that. Um, I have actually, um, yes, I believe you can, uh, yes. You can, if I, I'm not exactly configured it to use tags, generally the info, the, you can tell the search all open buffers. Oh, repeat the question. Um, he was asking about whether the uh, commands were, uh, whether this applies to the tags would apply anything, work with anything that could be tagged. Yes, anything, as far as I can tell, I have not used it because I have not gotten around to configuring it or have any, had really any need to do, do so yet. So, the next thing I got for you is this is the snippet extension. Um, it's pretty much a bunch of small code snip code ex snippets that you can expand by pressing tab. So if I will go back here and want to make a main, so I can just type in main and press tab, and it pulls a main function out of space. If I want to do a for loop, it uh, pulls a for loop template out of space. Um, you can switch through them by pressing tab. It remembers where you are, and the snippet will exit. In this case, the snippet will exit in the middle. So five, and it goes back to there. And you can do it again, and you can even embed them. Maybe not like that, but you can definitely. There's ways to embed snippets inside snippets inside snippets inside snippets. So next, we have NXHTML mode. Um, remember how I said that Emac you can only have one major mode per buffer. Um, this gets in the way for things like web development when you want, may want to embed JavaScript in, H in HTML. Um, in this case, if you, it would just be HTML, you would try to do JavaScript inside a script tag, and it would try to syntax highlight it like HTML. You don't want that. So what this guy tried to do is, um, it tries to say he made a library that um, adds multiple major mode support. It's just a major mode that can go switch between other major modes within it. Um, it, it works, it works well. Um, in some cases, the high syntax highlighting is a little weird and the uh, packaging, the way it's packaged is just, is, is also a humongous blob of Emacs Lisp that is hard to actually install on a Unix system. I believe the uh, guy does it, the developer runs Windows. Um, but it, it, it works. I personally do not like it too much because it's hard to install and handle, but it's, 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 this, solves the, this solves that web, web development problem. So org mode. Org mode is the scariest thing in Emacs. Um, it's just a, plan, just a way to uh, do a bunch of notes, project planning, authoring, to-do lists, etc. And what really makes this crazy, as below, is that it can be export, that you can, there are ways to export um, org mode, org files to HTML or LaTeX. Um, actually, there's a way to make slides like this in org mode, translate it to LaTeX, and then you can compile LaTeX, and you've used org mode to make slides. It's really nuts. So, let's go. So this is a little uh, thing I made up. So this is org mode. I expand, I ex expand the subheadings with tabs, and it's crazy, yeah. So I think I gave you a reason why it was crazy, the fact that you could export to everything. So I can say that's done with Control C, Control T. It's done. This is all plain text that it parses and collapses immediately. And I can cycle, actually cycle through it no, nothing to do, to do, we're done. You know, multiple levels of stuff, many, many levels. It's generally used for organization, but I'm old fashioned. I do planning in something like this. I like these things. And there's a reason why it's crazy, but there's nothing under it. It's the, the, uh, 
subtrees are indicated by uh, black ellipses on the end. So let's go back again. There's also a bunch of other editing modes. This isn't exactly cool, but occasionally you will try to edit, edit something that want to edit a file that isn't supported by default in Emacs, and you might have to go on a little treasure hunt to find the major mode for that. Unfortunately, um, uh, Vim has that settled down. All the, all the uh, syntax styling, pretty much every single thing you'd ever want to do is already in Vim. To get stuff like Haskell, you would have to go find a Haskell mode. To do PHP, of all things, you'd think there would be a PHP mode in Emacs, but there's not for some reason. So you'd have to go uh, pull it down from the Emacs wiki, which I will talk about again later. Uh, yes, yeah, so you might want to put in, might want to put PHP in there, so you'd have to use that uh, NX, NXHTML stuff to do that and get highlighting for it. It will still, let you, it'll still let you type it in. It'll just be confused. So now I get to go to all the cool stuff that's not related to text editing. And the first thing you might be wondering is, I'm doing this presentation in Emacs, right? Yes, I am. There is an entire mode dedicated to uh, viewing PDFs. What it does is it runs ghost script on all the pages in the, PD in the PDF and converts them to PNG images, which are in turn displayed within an Emacs buffer. Thus you lose all the little metadata information and it can be a bit slow and there's no way to actually tell it to go fill up the entire screen. I had to guess at the number that would make this, make it fit here and there isn't a way to center it, but it's effective. The only way I actually figured out that it existed was because I accidentally opened a PDF file when I was doing some editing in LaTeX, and it opened it, and I was rather shocked. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, actually, I can, I can view the binary. <laughs> oh no, why are you re, why are you re-rendering all the pages? Okay, now I have to go all, that was not anticipated, I'll go all the way back to where I was. Sorry about that. Oh yeah, there's that. So there's IRC clients. Emacs has two IRC clients. Um, that's actually what that uh, little pound sign is there for. It says that there's some activity in another activity in one of the uh, windows I have open. So let's go back to that other frame. Let's go to the, uh, um, this is ERC. So I can go, I can type things. Yeah, there's uh, lots of features. This is, this is, there are many extension modules for this. The one thing that kind of gets me is it just says ERC. I don't always look, or look at the bottom of this here to see that this channel is like Linux best. Sometimes I want it to be like ERC and have the name there. There's a way to do that too. There's a way to make this thing stick, stick on the bottom. One thing that really bothers me about this though and Emacs client, Emacs IRC clients in general is that this is the order of the names that comes down from the server itself, which can, which is, I, it's not in any particular order. In order to find someone, you have to look through all of them or try a tab complete. And it just gets, it just gets in my, I just find it to be annoying. I found no simple way of doing that without, mod, without making some new list function. So, Yep, let's go back to some, let's go back to this. And Emacs, of course, has email clients. Um, I don't use email in Emacs. I didn't really uh, get, I didn't really, um, really get why it's necessary to use mail in Emacs. But there are mail and news clients for Emacs. There's actually more than one of them. There are some differences between them. I have never actually used one myself. Simply, and Apparently, to set them up, you need to just go make some more lists, set some more variables, and then in the end, hope it works. But they reportedly do work well and are well integrated into, the, into Emacs as a whole. So next we got, 
the doctor. So if you're feeling down and you want to get, and you feel like the world's crawling down upon you, you can go, get, you can use your own personal doctor in Emacs. So Emacs doctor, if I can spell. Yes, you are the psychotherapist. Please describe your problems. Okay. And it's still and and the uh, all right. So the so uh, Viper still applies here. So yeah. <laughs> Why do I say, it, it'll, it'll constantly ask you that a lot. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Yeah, bye doctor. So next we got terminals. Now you never have to leave Emacs. Emacs has its own terminal. Fully functional terminal. I can list files, I can do a, uh, I can see how big my emacs.emacs.d is, 8.3 megabytes. Uh, this is um, pretty, this is a most, this is a pretty functional term. It's not completely functional. There's some uh, things in it that don't work. I've tried to run screen in this, and screen, or CN screen, it doesn't work. Um, large amounts of IO slow it down incredibly. Um, I personal, uh, general people who use Emacs generally recommend using something like an X term or RxVT or some other, uh, yeah. Uh, your question is, can you run Emacs and run Emacs and Emacs? The answer is yes. You can also run Vim in Emacs. <laughs> it does have a text editor. Um, Probably, but there's a there's a web browser in Emacs. It's W, it's W, uh, it's not actually in Emacs, but it, it's W it's W3M. You can download it, install it. it. It's just another one of those things that I never really used. Oh yeah 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 you can pro yeah do you almost definitely run links in here. So the daemon, so what, there, what all these things these days generally have, if you have a humongous program, you, Gavin, you have an auto starter. So the Emacs, so Emacs has its own little uh, daemon that you can run, it opens up a Unix socket, you can go and uh, connect to it using Emacs clients, or in addition, you can go do, uh, run server start from within Emacs. Um, this is nice because the startup, so you can open and close Emacs client really quickly as opposed to having to wait the uh, few seconds it takes for Emacs to load all of my configuration. Next, we got color themes. So Emacs is not, is not natively themable. Um, all themes really are just a collection of faces. So what, all right, so what you can do is you'd have, to, it's not in Emacs at the moment, but the wise people, wise Emacs developers said, we must, we should add this because people have been using it so much. So do I, have it? Um, so, oh, I forgot I was talking about color themes, okay. Color, so there's, there's a bunch of color theme initialization functions. One of them is, actually it's here, color theme selects. So you can have all the little color themes in Emacs, you can go look at them, you press enter, or go away Viper, you get in my way. Um, you can press enter and it'll set, it'll just go switch between them. You can preview tons of color themes. Um, not all of them are good on the eyes. This is the one I use. Um, it doesn't help that the projector is dark. It looks a lot better on here. So in the end, one of the things, the bad thing is the color thing is, color theme is it's hard to change the, change every, change it so you can just go reset and everything's back to normal. So there's also a bunch of games. If I had the time, I would show you Tetris, but you can do MX Tetris and play Tetris and Emacs. There's also a bunch of other games. It's in the menu. 
resources. There's an Emacs tutorial in Emacs, Control HT. There's these links. The um, tour is where actually where I got a lot of this information. The wiki is awesome. The good way to start up the uh, start configuring Emacs is to use the Emacs starter kit that Technomancy made. It's a lot cleaner than my config that I can get. Uh, I can uh, link you to if you want. And just Google in general. It just it'll probably link you to the Emacs wiki, but it is definitely definitely helpful. So um, that is it. Anything for anything for me? to make actually what about this I can help with like that. it can help we you have the same problem what would happen if you did this you gave me a I good found idea. problem how do you do that it's like this well, I disagree with that. Really cool with that. let's put the word out As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you. OS. An OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS. HP.